Hello from ABA Tech Show 2017 in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Joshua Lennon. And I'm John Suff from LegalZoom. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. Thank you so much for joining us on On the Road. It's a pleasure to be here today. Today we're talking about John Sa, Legal Zoom, and the impact on legal technology companies and the provision of legal services. John, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. So you were part of a plenary panel that also included Avo and Rocket Lawyer. And while I thought it would be a contentious panel, it actually ended up being very interesting. And one of the things you provided was an insight from someone who is not a lawyer. You're the CEO of LegalZoom, but you came there straight from business rather than from law school like everyone else on that stage. How did you end up working for a company that provides legal services? From a totally naturally adjacent place being e-commerce fashion. So (laughs) I'm an internet entrepreneur and I love supply chain and uh, I went from starting up, uh, you know, jcrew.com and barnesnewyork.com and a variety of things and then I actually took a break from the first seven companies that we started and mm-hmm. uh, did a lot of nonprofit right. and was advising a few companies, one of which was LegalZoom. So for me, LegalZoom was a mission driven, profitable nonprofit. Yeah. And uh, I thought I'd just help out for a year or two and ended up now running it for the last 12 years. So, what would you say is the mission of LegalZoom? Democratize law. Can you tell us what that means as a company's mission? <clears throat> sure. We believe that access to the legal system, and particularly for the middle class and small business owners, is a fundamental right without which this economy and this democracy do not function as intended. And when we look at the last 30 years, there's a crisis of growing proportion of people in the middle class not having access to the law. And that's really the problem that that we seek to solve. Okay, and how does LegalZoom go about solving that for middle class and small businesses? Sure, well we have created a platform of people in technology um, it, interestingly enough, we started as a pure kind of DIY software mm-hmm. and then added a legal plan and now we're a law firm uh, in the UK. So we've undergone quite an evolution uh, in our business, in our business model. But the short of it is creating a platform of people in technology that create solutions. Okay. And since the founding of LegalZoom, you've started actually helping vast numbers of people across both North America and now in the United Kingdom. What are some of the numbers of people you've helped with legal services? So we helped uh, over 4 million Mm -hmm. uh, customers. We uh, uh, execute a last will for folks every four minutes. Uh, We do almost four in 10 LLCs in California, one in nine businesses across the country. Yeah. So pretty much whether it's a trademark or forming business or last will, if we provide the service, we tend to be the largest provider of that particular service. Gotcha, yeah, and you're actually now becoming one of the most recognized brands in legal services, correct? Uh, yep, about seven out of 10 uh, adult Americans now recognize the LegalZoom brand, so uh, there's still 30% out there. Yeah, still still some more people to reach. And that has Work, works not ahead. only set up a friendly relationship between LegalZoom and lawyers, and that's what part of today's conversation was. And I think it's very interesting to use the term supply chain earlier. So you view LegalZoom as part of a continuum of legal services that will help people access a greater variety of legal services. Where do lawyers fit in that supply chain? We believe the, to, if you listen to the customer, mm-hmm. what the customer wants is a transparent kind of flat fee paid by a credit card from a provider that they trust. And for the vast majority of Americans, the provider that they trust for a legal solution must be a lawyer. Yes, absolutely. So we believe lawyers are front and center Mm -hmm. to the delivery of legal services. Um, And currently, we only work with about 3,000 or so Mm -hmm. uh, lawyers uh, in the U.S. and in the U.K. Um, We expect that to grow somewhere to between 10 and 30,000 over the next five years. When you say work with these lawyers, what what type of services are they providing and how are they working with LegalZoom? So, uh, there's actually a reasonably broad continuum for that. So, obviously, in the U.K., we have lawyers that are, uh, you know, employees Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of our alternative business structure in ABS. Yep. In the U.S., we have legal plan firms, so boutique Mm -hmm. law firms that service a lot of LegalZoom customers within the state. So, they may have, you know, 10, 20 lawyers dedicated to LegalZoom customers or or spending a significant portion of their time. Mm -hmm. And we will 
pay those lawyers to service our clients. Okay. Um, within this construct, legal construct of a legal plan. And then we also refer business to lawyers mm -hmm. um, in more of a straight kind of marketing lead gen way. Gotcha. I've met some of the lawyers who work on the legal service plan, and they actually provide a really interesting service. So it's the, the LegalZoom customer will request to speak to a lawyer, and then you will t invite a consultation between this independent law firm who's on the legal service plan and yep. the LegalZoom customer. Is that a, an accurate way to describe what's going on? Yeah, so often what happens is our legal plan firm will uh, do a consultation. The majority of time, the, consul the consultation is the delivery of service. They okay. get a yes, no, or no, that's not an issue. But occasionally, a real issue pops up that requires follow-on work. Mm -hmm. Then our legal plan firm will refer that to another attorney or to another law firm. Okay. And that's really between that plan firm and those other lawyers. We don't get it's involved the independent in that professional judgment. Yeah, yes. that's a, a key component of this. Yeah. But interestingly, when they give a consultation alongside a legal or for a legal zoom customer, there's feedback that those lawyers are getting on their performance as well. How are they becoming part of a greater legal service supply chain in working with LegalZoom? Sure. So what I'm very proud of that we as an organization have built over the last five years is a very scalable, objectively high quality by, by a number of metrics uh, mm -hmm. advice plan. So we've delivered several hundred thousand uh, mm -hmm. consultations. I was mm -hmm. just at our um, California law firm and we, uh, we celebrated the hundred thousandth consultation, one-on-one -on -one consultation that they've delivered. Wow. So every time someone delivers a consultation, we, are, we send them a net promoter survey. It's a, a mm -hmm. common methodology. And then we actually have an individual net promoter ranking by month for every single lawyer. Yeah. And that's how we keep lawyers, um, a feedback loop for lawyers to know that their customers, hey, they like the way you handle that issue. They didn't understand you. There's mm -hmm. too much jargon. So we give constant feedback um, via, the, via kind of the whole set of customers back to lawyers. Uh, and then uh, the partners of those law firms train lawyers as well. That's amazing. And so you've set up, like we've said, a supply chain where we're getting customer-centric legal services, feedback and participation for the law firms that are involved, and everyone moving forward towards a greater access to legal services. Yeah. It's, it's actually amazing to see how many people, most of the lawyers come in with a net promoter of 4 to 6%. Oh, wow. That's and very low. over a period of about six to 12 months, mm -hmm. we'll get them over to a 70%. That's amazing. Uh, but, you know, some integration of technology, there's some training, but that is, um, I think, a core asset of what we built over the last five years. So we're just about out of time. If there are lawyers out there listening who want to learn more about participating with LegalZoom, where would they go to find out more information? So we have an intake form on the site for lawyers that uh, want to be partnered with LegalZoom in any which way or learn more about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd say the ways that we'll partner with folks um, going forward could very well be quite different from the ways we've partnered with folks in the past. Mm -hmm. But I think what will be consistent is that lawyers will become an increasing portion um, to the majority of how we deliver uh, legal services. Well, thank you very much, John. It was great seeing you at ABA Tech Show, and we appreciate you continuing the conversation on illegal services and greater access to legal services for everyone. Thanks for having me. Well, we've reached the end of the road for today's episode. I want to thank our guests for joining us today. I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you've heard today, please rate us on iTunes. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. Great job, guys. What a professional. I didn't know you are a radio guy. I've got a face for radio. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.